Hello and welcome. In this video tutorial, we're going to look at the homework for Unit 8, Lesson 5 on the volume of pyramids and cones. Please remember to pause or rewind the video as necessary. Let's begin. In order to find the volumes of pyramids and cones, uh, we need to understand, uh, based on our lesson, that uh, a pyramid and a cone really represents one third of an entire right shape. Okay, so what was, <clears throat> so I mean like a right figure would be like a right cylinder or a right prism, something where we went one, we went to the area of the base, the volume of a right prism was the area of the base times whatever the height was. Okay, if it was a cylinder and the area of the base was a circle, right, pi r squared times the height. If the area, if it was a prism, then it was area of the base was length times width times the height. <clears throat> but the point is the right prism, whatever shape it was, was the area of whatever the base was times the height or the depth of the object. A pyramid and a cone are both, both of them, one third the volume of a right polygon. Okay. So in other words, the volume of a pyramid, VC is the volume of a cone, and VPY, which is volume of a pyramid, are both one third area of the base times height, <clears throat> okay. or we could write it uh, area of the base times height divided by three. I kind of prefer this way right here, but both of them are going to be the same thing. And that's what we're going to use as we go through this particular homework lesson. So number one, which of the following is the volume of the cone pictured in cubic inches? Well, the radius is four. See it here. The height is six and uh, this is pretty easy the uh, volume of a cone is going to be area of the base times height divided by three but area of the base is going to be pi r squared because it's a circle the base is the circle right here times the height divided by three so we're going to go pi times four inches squared don't forget to square it times the height of six inches, and then we'll divide the whole thing by three. Well, three goes into six two times, and then two times 16 would be 32 pi, which you guys can see is option, option number one. <clears throat> number two, a pyramid is built such that it has, its faces are congruent. Isosceles triangles who whose legs are 10 inches long. So in other words, this leg on the bottom, the bottom leg, the back leg, and that back leg are all isosceles triangles. The face that's in the front here is an equilateral triangle. And that's what it says here. The fourth face is equilateral. So which of the following is the closest to the volume of the pyramid? So we know that all the legs are 10. So that's 10, that's 10, and that height is 10. So the area of that base that's on the bottom there, the volume of this pyramid is area of the base times height divided by three. Area of the base is gonna be a triangle. So we're gonna have to go one half base times height or one half length times width. Probably would be better to say it that way so it would confuse the base concept. So one half length times width times height divided by three. So one half, uh, the length is 10, the height is 10, uh, <clears throat> the width is 10, length is 10, width is 10, and the height is also 10. And then we're gonna take all that and divide it by three. <clears throat> and so,
Let's see what we have here. So half of 10 would be five, five times 10 would be 50, 50 times another 10 would be 500. So we end up with 500 thirds. That's obviously not one of our answers, but if you do divide 503, you get pretty close to 167 cubic inches. Which is option number three. Number three, an octahedron, octahedron <clears throat> an eight-faced uh, solid, is created by connecting two pyramids as shown as the basis. In other words, you see a pyramid, or you have a pyramid on top. Pyramid on top. And then one on bottom. So essentially, the volume of octahedron so I'm going to call that VO or V oct is going to be two times the volume of a pyramid because we have two pyramids, one stacked on top of the other. So let's find the volume of each pyramid and we'll essentially double it. So the volume of the octahedron is going to be two because we have two pyramids times area of the base times height divided by three. <clears throat> so this is gonna be two times, now area of the base, if you see the base has uh, a square, so it's 20 centimeters on each side. So that's 20, that's 20, that's 20, that's 20 in the back. Uh, and notice the height from top to bottom of octahedron is 30. So the height of each pyramid is only 15. Okay, and then you got you got to use that because you got to find the volume of each pyramid, and then double it, and you'll have the volume of the octahedron. So the area of the base would be four hundred, so twenty times twenty times the fifteen, which is the height, and then divide by three for the fact that it is a pyramid. And then once we multiply all that and double it, so we have four hundred. 400 times the 15, and then divide by three is 2,000, and then double that, we get 4,000. Cubic centimeters. Which of the following volume is the largest cone that can fit inside a cube whose uh, volume is eight cubic inches? Okay, so if the volume is eight cubic inches, what that means is each side of the cube is two inches. Think about that. Two times two times two, oops, not two, three, times two equals eight. Okay, so length times width times height, right, is the volume of a cube equals eight cubic inches. Now, um, that's gonna be helpful to know that each of our sides is two. So I'm gonna quickly draw a picture of this so we can visualize what we're talking about here. We've got a box. There's our cube. And then inside we've got a cone this on the inside. Uh, now the cone itself has a height the same as one of the sides. Remember the sides of the cube are two, two, and two. You can see that the cone itself would also have a diameter of two. So the diameter is two inches, which means the radius is one inch. The height would also be two inches. So we needed the picture to kind of fill out the information that we need to do the calculation. The actual calculation is pretty easy. The volume of the cone, VC, is going to be area of the base times height divided by three. But the base is a circle, so it's going to be pi r squared times h over three. 
uh, and we'll go pi times the radius, which is one squared times the height, which is two divided by three. And you can see all your answers are in terms of pi. So one squared is one times two is two divided by three. This would be two pi divided by three cubic inches. And we can see that that is two thirds pi cubic inches. That's option number one. <clears throat> now in number five, it says we have a water tower in New York City that has the shape of a cylinder with a cone on top. The cylinder has a diameter of 12 feet and a height of six feet. Determine the height of the cone to the nearest tenth of a foot. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. If you look at the cone, the cone, you can see there's a little triangle that's shaped right here. So I'm gonna take that, and I'm gonna bring that out, and we're gonna work with that as our picture. We were told that the angle of incline is 25 degrees. Let me write that in here. And um, we're looking for the height of this cone. So we're looking for H. Now, the radius of the cone, this part right here, the radius, would be half of the 12 feet. So the radius would be six, or the base would be six. Now, anytime we have an angle and sides, we should be thinking right triangle trigonometry. This is the adjacent side. This is the opposite side. And the only trig function, if you guys remember your, your uh, Sokatoa, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. And so that's exactly what we have here. We have the opposite side of the triangle, we have the adjacent side of the triangle. So we're gonna use the tangent ratio of that angle right there. So let's uh, set this up. The tangent of 25 degrees equals opposite, that's H, what we're looking for, divided by adjacent, which is six. Okay, that's our equation. Now, next thing we're gonna do with this equation is we're gonna solve it for H. So tan 25 equals h over six. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply both sides by six to get rid of the dividing by six. And h is by itself. So h is equal to six times the tangent of 25 degrees. Okay, now if you're using a calculator in class, then you just simply put six tangent of 25 and you'll get the answer. If you're using your cell phone as a calculator, you may have to do this. You may have to go 25, hit the tangent button, then multiply by six. Some calculators do have to work backwards. It depends on the calculator you have. In any event, you get 2.8 feet high. Determine the overall volume of the tower to the nearest cubic foot. Well, Okay, so VT is gonna be the volume of the tower. That's gonna be the volume of the cone on top plus the volume of the cylinder. So we just need to find those two volumes and add them up and we'll have the total volume. So volume of the cone is gonna be um, area of the base times height divided by three. But again, the base of a cone is a circle. So it's going to be pi r squared times the height over three, pi times the radius, which was six, times the height we just found is 2.8, all over three. Oh, it's six squared. I'm sorry, radius squared. Okay, plug that into our calculator. We're going to go six squared times 2.8 times pi. It equals, then divide by three. And we get about 105.6 cubic feet for the cone on top. The pyramid, or the, I keep saying pyramid, the cylinder 
volume CY is also the area of the base times height, but it's not divided by three because a cylinder is a right polygon. Um, so the area of the base is also a circle. So it's pi r squared times height, but it's a different height. The height of the cylinder is 15 feet, not the 2.8. So we're gonna go pi times the same radius squared times 15 feet. So 36 squared, or about six squared is 36 times 15 times pi gives us about 1696.46 cubic feet. Right. And so the volume of the tower would just simply be the, be the sum of those two. It would be the cone plus the cylinder, or 105.6 plus 1696.46, and you should get around 1802, about 1802 cubic feet. In part C, it says there are 7.48 gallons in a cubic foot. If residents of the apartment are using the water from the tower at a rate of 56 gallons per minute, how long will it take to drain the entire tower? Okay. We're looking for time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, this, uh, that right there. And uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take our, first I'm going to take our, our volume and I'm going to convert it to gallons. That's going to be the first thing. So there, uh, if I take 1802 cubic feet times the fact that there is one cubic foot, in 7.48 gallons. And why do I set it up this way? Because I've got to have the cubic feet cancel. So the cubic feet has to go on the bottom, so it cancels with cubic feet up here. That's why I set it up this way. The math is pretty straightforward. It's 1802 times 7.48. And we get 13,479 gallons of water total in that tower. Okay, so I'm looking for time now. So I've got a ratio that says per minute, per one minute, it takes one minute to uh, essentially use 56 gallons. So in one minute, 56 gallons are used. I'm gonna start there. Now I'm gonna multiply that times the total number of gallons that were here, so 13,479. Why am I doing that again? Because I want the units to cancel properly, leaving me with the proper unit of time, how long. And so the math, again, also takes care of itself. It's going to be 13,479 times 1 is 13,479 over 56, which is about 241 minutes. Now, if you were to take 241 minutes and divide by 60, the fact that there are 60 minutes in every hour, right? Then you would also get the fact that this is around four hours. It's like 4.01 or 4.02 hours, a little over four hours. Number six, the cone pictured has the same diameter as the cylinder, but only half of the height. If the cone used to fill up the cylinder with water, how many cones will it need to fill up the cylinder completely? Well, go back to the idea of, of how volume works. So the volume of a cone is equal to area of the base times height over three, right? Whereas the volume of a cylinder is just simply that same area, the exact same area, because it's the exact same circle, times height. In other words, you can see, since you're not dividing by three for the volume of a cylinder, 
the volume of a cylinder is three times the volume of a cone. What does that mean? It means you can fit three cones in any cylinder of the same radius. That's what it means. But if you look here, your cone is half the height. So what that means is if I were to break this up into two small cones, a cone right here, and a cone right here, Okay, now that's just two cones, but do keep in mind, we're talking about twice the amount of cylinder. So if we're talking about twice the amount of cylinder, that means I can fit twice the amount of cones. So since the cylinder is two times taller than the cone, it can fit twice as many cones, meaning six small cones equal one cylinder. Right, because two times three is six.